Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace, mercy, and blessings of God be upon you. This is a new presentation from www.central-mosque.com and from the Humble Heart YouTube channel. This is the eighth episode in the Making Sense series, and the topic today is Analysis of U.S. Election Results for America. I'm making it clear here that I'm not analyzing these results from the point of view of American foreign policy perspective, for example, the impact on Palestine, Kashmir, Middle East, or Afghanistan, etc. That will come much later, maybe in a few weeks or in a month's time. So in 2016, Hillary Clinton beat Donald Trump by a huge margin of 2.87 million votes. So it was always a given that Joe Biden will beat Trump in the popular vote. Donald Trump became president because of the Electoral College, and it was also a given that Biden may also win the Electoral College and eventually become the president. But this was not the expectation or what was needed. What was or is needed is for Joe Biden to comprehensively beat or deliver a landslide win against Donald Trump. So before we go there, let me briefly tell you how politics works in America. There are four main centers of power. Most people are familiar with just the president, be it George Bush or Obama or Trump. But the fact is that in order to set your agenda and deliver, you need to first control the U.S. House or Congress. You need then at least 60 or 51 votes minimum in the Senate. When the president appoints his cabinet, for example, Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, it is better to have your own 60 votes or at least 50 votes to be able to deliver the majority which the president needs to confirm the position to which he is appointing people to. If he doesn't have at least 50 votes, then he will have to appoint a compromise candidate which some in the other party will have to vote for for him to get to at least 50 votes. I'm saying 50 because if both sides have 50 votes, then the vice president delivers the 51st vote to get over the line. A bill is introduced in the Congress and then it passes. Then it goes to the Senate and then it passes and then the president can sign it into the law. It can, however, be challenged in the Supreme Court. So in summary, in order for the president to be powerful, he needs to have Congress, Senate, White House, of course, and the U.S. Senate on his side. Let's take a look at what Trump controls. So he does not have majority in the House or in the U.S. Congress. He, however, has majority in the Senate. He obviously is in the White House. That's fine. He has drastically altered the Supreme Court in his favor. So Biden had a few goals keep the majority in the U.S. Congress, which the Democrats have at the moment, flip the Senate so he can put through his own cabinet or his choice of people. And by having majority in the Senate, he can also appoint new judges or use other ways to block the Supreme Court from overturning his policies or his bills or his executive orders. By all accounts, 3rd of November has been a disaster for Joe Biden. Here's Analyze. Here's some analysis as to how. So in America, president needs at least 270 electoral college votes to win. As I told you, Hillary Clinton had 2.87 million more popular votes than Trump, but still did not become the president. Florida state usually delivers its election results quick. In, in Dade County, which is one of the largest counties in Florida. There's a huge Cuban population. And although Hillary Clinton lost the state of Florida, she still beat Donald Trump by over 30 points in this Dade County, which has always been traditionally Democrat. Joe Biden won Dade County last night by only seven points. This was a disaster. And you knew right from the beginning and could predict that there's no way Joe Biden will deliver landslide victory against Trump. And so far, although we do not know the full results, but there's no democratic blue wave and no overwhelming victory. The Cubans of Dade County have flipped and overwhelmingly voted for Donald Trump. So Joe Biden already had majority in the U.S. Congress or the House, but he had to gain majority in the Senate by flipping or winning back at least three or four seats. 
This was the absolute minimum. So far, Democrats have won two seats, but the results that came from South Carolina were absolutely shocking. We knew that a decisive shift in the Senate is not happening. Lindsey Graham right here is the biggest supporter of Donald Trump and he was challenged by Jamie Harrison and this became the most expensive Senate election in the US history. In all the polls before the elections, the fight was always neck and neck. The results, Lindsey Graham won by 13 points despite having less money and being plagued by media criticism all over and again and again and again. He continuously backed Trump and his policies and his margin of victory is an absolute disaster for Joe Biden. And this told us that the Senate fi flipping or gaining majority in the Senate is going to be, Joe Biden will be hanging on by a thread, even if he gains majority. Let's go back to our centers of power slide. The idea was that if Biden delivers a landslide victory or a knockout punch, then the Republican Party will be beaten so badly that it will reflect on its loss and reconsider Trump and his policies. By having a majority in the Senate, Biden will be able to overturn many of Trump's old policies. None of that has happened so far. In fact, many Republicans have won seats in US House and Senate by being openly racist, xenophobic and Trump backers. The stamp of Trump on the Republican Party has been delivered. There will be no retrospection. There will be no deliberation. There will be no turning back on many of the Trump policies. Democrats and Biden have, have failed to deliver the knockout punch. The only hope is a US Senate election in 2022 for Democrats to try to gain better control of the Senate. And usually when there's elections in America without the presidential elections, the Democrats don't do well. But the 2022 election and the mats look good for the Democrats. There's also hope that Georgia State Senate elections, because nobody seems to have won more than 50% of the votes last night, will be redone in January 2021. Democrats may be able to win or both seats in Georgia State in January 2021. Right now, there's no winner in the presidential election. Joe Biden will probably win and Democrats may gain a seat or two in the US Senate, but the idea was to defeat Trump and force a reckoning within the Republican Party. That has not happened. Trump will live long even after he loses, if he loses in these elections. Jazakallahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.